Give him the strength. Be with him. Stand by him. So that he should be able to deliver what is prepared. And be with each one of us who is here and watching on platforms. So that we should be able to use the word that is there today. We pray all this through the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Once again, thank you very much. The one who gave us the first prayer. Marombo Kausi Elder. And uh, the one who will give us uh, the bread of life for this morning. And he will continue with the, the country raving presentation is Elder Mandura. I'm the chair for today, Brian Story Elder. So it's time for you. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Uh, it's time for our devotion this morning. And uh, as the chairman has already rightly said, after the devotion, we'll just make a transition into the presentations and the other sessions to follow uh, regarding the country living issue. Uh, this morning, I just wanted us to reflect um, for our devotion on Revelation chapter 12. Uh, the preacher last night touched on Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 17. I just want to back up a little bit and start with Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Now, Revelation chapter 12 uh, is where we find the final conflict of the great controversy. In that section, we get to see the dragon be being angry with the woman, there is war in heaven, and all these things that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 12. Now, on, chapter 11, on verse 11, it says, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. They overcame him, and this him is the enemy, the dragon, and they are the seed of the woman. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. Beloved, Sister White when she was commenting about this in the Bible commentary. It says, the secret of overcoming sin. So she, she, she used Revela Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, to bring out a point that there is a secret in here to overcome sin. And it says, the secret of overcoming sin, we become overcomers by helping others to overcome. By the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. The keeping of the commandments of God will yield in us an obedient spirit. And the service that is the offspring of such a spirit, God can accept. So, Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 is saying they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And the Bible commentary here is bringing out an important element that there is a secret here in overcoming sin. You only overcome or the best way to overcome or the secret to overcome is to help others overcome. By the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice that Jesus gave on the cross, showing the world what God had done for them, but also by the word of their own testimony. What has God done to you? What has he done to me? You see, it's one thing to talk about the gospel. In theory, you know God can save. You know when you are in distress, God is able to come through for you. 
we can talk about this thing in theory but the power that that message has only comes home when you speak of what the lord has done for you so in this upcoming sessions we would want by god's grace to magnify the cross and what god had done and has done for you and me but at the same time also to bring about the word of our own testimony that I have been there this is what I have seen I have experienced that and God has done this to the glory of his name so the same thing with you and me God is saying if you want to overcome sin help somebody else to overcome tell them what God has done for you when they are struggling when they are when they are weak when their children are in a mess what has God done for you you may think no my testimony is not important no what I'm, I'm about to say you know is, is is not even that important like what those people can say but the testimony that you will say there is somebody albeit one person that the lord wants to speak to through your particular testimony so beloved if you want to live a life of overcoming the bible is saying share what the lord has done for you So I would want to emphasize that testimonies are powerful because they bring the gospel to life. It moves from just being theory to reality. And that's what the Lord would have us to meditate and reflect upon this morning. So I wanted us to go through this and the Lord has spoken what he wanted to say. May his name be praised and exalted. Amen. Before we make the transition I would want us to close our eyes for a word of prayer. God our Father in the name of your son Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for waking us up this morning. Thank you for your word that is quick. Your word is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces asunder the bone and the marrow. Your word is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. May you discern the thoughts and intents of our heart through your word. And as we study heavenly father the message that you gave to your remnant church. I just want to invite the presence of your spirit to be in this place. For those who are hearing the message now and those who hear this message hereafter. May your spirit continue to speak until the end of time and to the glory of your name. I pray that you help us to see you through it all. Let man be put in the dust and may Christ and Christ alone be seen, be known and be heard. For I've asked and prayed in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. Uh We have had a very interesting uh privilege that the Lord has given you and me uh to study on the subject of country living. So as the brochure has already indicated, uh I am not alone. I'm here together with my wife and uh our two family friends that we've come together to share with you what the Lord has done for us and what he, what he continues to do and what we hope and believe he will do uh in the future and all to the glory of his name so we will i would want to first start by saying uh, we don't come here boasting to be experts that you know we know everything you know we we can answer every question and somehow we we have already reached the heavenly land we are already in Canaan right now we we are the most spiritual and righteous that is not the intention of this discussion but as isaiah said come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins may be as red as as scarlet they shall be as white as snow God says come now and let us reason together. So I thank God for this opportunity uh the camp meeting committee has has put together that we should have a discussion on uh, what 
country living is and what country living is not. So this is how we are going to approach the session this morning. I will first start by making a presentation, uh, which will be for about an hour or so. Then after the presentation, I'm going to invite my other family friends, uh, which I'm going to introduce, to come to the front. Then we'll have a session where we are going to share our testimonies and what God has done and what he continues to do. After that segment, then we are going to pass the mic around in the audience, that we ask questions, we give comments, maybe from the presentation or maybe from the testimonies that you've heard, you have a comment, you have a question, uh, we are going to give each other that chance so that now we begin to interact because that is really the main purpose for this session, that we interact and uh, you have things that you know or perhaps you'd want to know better so we can interact and, and uh, discuss. So that's basically how we are going to approach uh, the presentation for this section. I would want to start with a disclaimer uh, from the book of uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and uh, verse 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So I am saying, like Paul has said, and I'm speaking this on behalf of all my friends, that we have not and we are not counting ourselves to have apprehended. That you know what, we got it all, it's, it's okay, we know everything. But this one thing, we do, and that is forgetting those things which are behind, whatever mistakes, the past and the errors, but we are reaching forward to the things which are before and pressing towards the mark of God. I would want to define a few words. I like when I'm making a presentation or whatever it is to make some few definitions of words because, you see, language is made up of words. So even the word itself, country living, it's a it's a, it's a word. Okay, those are two words put together that uh, were used to communicate something. So I would use the Noah's Webster's Dictionary of 1828 uh, to get a few definitions. Okay, the word country, just for a brief introduction, the word country from the dictionary, it has many, many uh, definitions. One of them, it says territory at a distance from a city. A place which is rural or rustic. Uh, it also means a land that is adjacent to a city. A property or the land lying about or near a city. That's what the definition says. Uh, the territory situated in the vicinity of a city. Or the whole territory of a kingdom or state or nation as opposed to to a city. So the definition of uh, the, 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 the dictionary is saying any place which is not the city, it's elsewhere, out there. The dictionary is defining that place as country. Why I'm defining this is for a reason. You and me, are, well, as we sit here, we are Malawians. And uh, whoever is going to be listening to this will be coming from whichever country they come from. But we need to appreciate that the one who coined that phrase, country living, was an American. So you must understand how they understand these words as they give them. So to see what these words mean is very important for you and for me. The word country also means the land of nativity, a state or territory in which one is born. In other words, we say this is the country of what? Malawi. You understand? So, the definition of the word country can mean a place which is not in, inside the city, or is not within the city, or a place outside of the city. So, that's the definition of the word. So, the one who is, was using that word was using that word with that particular understanding. Now, the other word, the first one is country. You can begin to see the first word most likely is not talking about a nation. 
in, uh, in the subject we're discussing now, when he says country living, I don't think he's talking about living in a country like Malawi or living in a country like Zambia. I don't think that's basically what it is trying to imply. But I think it's the other definitions that were more towards a place which is not the city, the place which is outside. So you're beginning to see a context here developing from those words. Now, the word is, there is a word country and then there's another word living. So the first one is talking much about location. And the second one is now the living part. So both of these words should not be divorced. Let me repeat. These words should not be divorced. To say, I'll just focus on country and I'll stop there. The place, where is it and all that. And you forget about the next one, which is said living. So living is also the other part of the whole message. Living, the definition from the dictionary, is dwelling, residing, existing, subsisting, livelihood, having the life or the vital functions or as in you are not dead. So now, if you just make a plain connection between these two words, country, living, you begin to see it's trying to tell you something about a location and a certain way of living. And they said, how are you going to, uh, the livelihood, or how are you going to be residing, how are you going to be existing? So these two words are put together and for a reason. Meaning, if it was somebody else writing this, and that person was perhaps a Malawian, and he was given a chance to talk about this subject, what he would have said was not, go he was not going to say country living. If it was a Malawian, uh, if you're going to use it in, 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 your, in our vernacular language, you would have simply said, Kukala Kumuzi. Or Kukala Malogudi Sin Town. You know, you're living in a place which is rural. Because those, that's a language we are familiar with, and that's what we usually use. But now we have coined a term which has come from somewhere else. So we need to understand the context. What does the word country living mean? And that's why we are discussing about all this. You see, the Bible. Uh, I just want to apply, I just want to use how a certain this word country has been used in the Bible. And you begin to see the context, how it has been used. Just make, make an illustration. Like in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 14 to 7 says, for, the, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they, they came out, they might have returned, but now they desire a better country that is unheavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Now, are you beginning to see how the Bible is using this word, but in a different kind of a context? He's saying, these men of faith of Hebrews chapter 11, they desired a country. You can begin to see that it's bringing an element of they desired a place. They desired something better than what they were, ex they were experiencing. They wanted another land. So they were desiring another country. And God is saying they, this country they were desiring is a heavenly country. So I just want to, uh, to, to, to give a notion that when we are looking at these things, let's apply the context very well. Then it will help us in our understanding of what we need to understand. But I find it interesting that God is saying they're desiring a country, but he's saying, I have prepared for them a city. You know, this is a discussion on its own. Why has God prepared for his loved ones a city? Mr. Malumbu, why would God actually say, I've prepared you a city? And then the world is saying, I'll give you the city right now. I want you to see something deep right there. Take your time and digest it and do it. Why has God prepared for his people a city? And the world is saying, I'll give you that experience, but I'll give it to you when? Now. But God, in his wisdom, if we are going to go back through history and see all the men that were the children of God, you will realize one thing. In that context when they would say those who live in the mountains and those who live in the plains, it was bringing a context that the ones who lived in the mountains were the children of God. The ones who lived in these secluded places. But the ones who were living in the plains or the valleys were usually the children of the enemy, so to speak. So God is saying, I, it's as if he's saying, I want you to live a life where you somehow do not preempt. I, I'm preparing you something beautiful. You will live in a city. 
But that time is not now. I'm preparing it. That's what God's saying in the book of Hebrews. But that can be a discussion for another day. I just wanted to pass through there. So I will start with what country living is not. You see, as you sit there, as I stand here, and as whoever is going to be listening to this, we have all sorts of preconceived ideas. Either from what somebody has said, either from how we have interpreted what we have seen, or either what, whatever has happened that has made us to think the way we think when it comes to the subject of country living. So I want to go through certain elements that is not what country living is all about, or the elements what country living is all about. The first one I want to bring to your view is that country living is not for the end times. This, in my opinion, is one of the biggest myths about country living. That country living is for the very end. You know, you need to wait for the breaking news that, you know, CNN, BBC, TVM, Times, whatever, Zodiac, Hope Channel, whatever channel it is, it is brought breaking news. What is the breaking news? The Dominion, Dominican decree has been passed, so now nobody can buy or sell. So people are saying, oh, so when the breaking news comes, then that time is what I'm going to reserve country living for. That is not true. By far, it couldn't be further from the truth. Because you see, God would have you and me to understand this issue of country living before it is too late. Because if we wait until that time, we will have waited for too long. And this is why. I want to read from you from the book Councils to the Church. Councils to the Church, page 64, paragraph 4. There is something I want to bring out from that section. It says, Are we to wait until the fulfillment of the prophecies of the end before we say anything concerning them? Of what value will our words be then? Shall we wait until God's judgments fall upon the transgressors before we tell him how to avoid them? Where is our faith in the word of God? The servant of God is saying, are we to wait, honestly, are we to wait until we see all the fulfillment of prophecy and then we begin to start to speak? Are we to wait until all these things? And the servant of God is asking a question. Where is your faith in the word of God? Where is it? Because if you're waiting for a certain breaking news to come, where is your faith? Because you're simply acting because of what you have seen. God does not want you and me to have a reactive faith. He wants us to have an active faith. What does somebody say? Amen. Let me continue with that quotation. Must we see things foretold come to pass before we will believe what he has said? In clear, distinct rays, light has come to us, showing us that the great day of the Lord is near at hand, even at the doors. Let us read and understand before it is too late. The council of the church is simply saying this. Are we to wait until all these things that have been foretold, they should actually come to pass. Then when they come to pass, you and me are saying, oh, now I believe. Yeah? He's saying God has given you and me light. Let us believe and understand before it is too late. So the myth of saying country living is for the end time, meaning it has to be reserved and do the breaking news of the issues. No, that is a myth. It is not correct. The other point I want to bring out is that country living is not hiding. Country living is not hiding. Because there are many people who are saying, hey, we are going to go into a time of trouble. There will be problems coming in the future. So I need to find myself a place where not even the soldiers can find me. Not even network can reach me. I should find myself so far, so deep. Nobody will ever see me and I will just put my house there. Nobody will ever see me here. Country living is not hiding. That is a myth that the enemy has put among his people and even among the heathens. Because every time people hear country living, oh, so you've gone to hide. No, country living is not hiding. <laughs> From the Bible commentary, you see history repeats itself. It's funny. History repeats itself. Something of similar happened in the past. I will, I will read for you from the Bible commentary, volume 7, page 909. He's saying, some who had fallen into the error that Christ was to come in their day imbibed the fanatical idea that it was praiseworthy to show their faith by giving up all business and resigning themselves to idle waiting for the great event which they thought was near. 
This was a commentary, I think, on First Cor- on um, Fe- on First Thessalonians, where there were people in that in in the Paul's day. Some who felt that, you know what, Christ is going to come in our day. So they imbibed this fanatical idea and they just forsook everything, literally. And they were not even doing anything, not even farming or nothing. They said, you know what, we put ourselves here. We are just going to be waiting for the Lord to come. And that's exactly the mindset that some of you and me are having even now. That, you know what, I'll just go there, hide, I'm safe. No, country living is not hiding. As I've said, it's country living. It is country living. Please don't jump that word living. This living means active. There's something going on in this person's life. The other point I want to bring up out is that country living is not the end goal. What do I mean by saying country living is not the end goal? You see, there are others who think that when you break through this boundary line that it's as if you're in a race. Yeah? So the day you get out, now you are in the country, you, you have reached your destination. It's like you are now at the ultimate point that everybody is chasing. Now you are there, you are it. No, it is not the end goal. Country living is simply a beginning of a journey that God would like to take you and me through in what he needs to do, which we are going to expound when we start to talk about what country living is. So country living is not the end goal that someone can say, okay, now I have, you know, I have I've come to the epitome. All I need to wait is just translation because now I'm here in this bush. There are all these trees here. The next thing should just be translation. It is not the end goal. The other point is that country living is not just having property in the country. What do, I, what do I mean by that? There are times when others have this mindset, which is wrong, that they think, you know what, let me just, if you want me to live in the country, fine, I've heard the message, I will just transpose myself from here and place myself there. Meaning, I will build the way I build I will finish the way I finish. I will entertain myself the way I entertain myself. If I am subscribed to all the leagues and everything else, I will just transpose everything this side and live the same way I used to live. All the movies, all the games, all the what, just transposes. No, you can't lie to yourself. I cannot lie to myself. But you know what? Since I'm in this bush, then it means I'm country living. No, no, country living is a way of life. If we have continued the customs and everything else that was there in the city, then something has been missed. Because it is not intended just to transpose everything. Now you are busy with the entertainment of the world and everything else. The other point to bring out is that country living is not being connected to the greed. You see... One, others would say they will find a good place where they can actually develop themselves and say, no, or there's no, you know, there's no power, there's no like water, there's no connected, or oh, there's so I can't live there because it's not there. No, country living is not being connected to the greed. Why do I say what I am saying? You see, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy warn us many a times, and I'll give you one of the references from the book Desire of Ages. The book Desire of Ages brings out something you and me need to take note of. And it should help us to understand what I'm saying. In the last great conflict, Desire of Ages, pages 121, paragraph 3. In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. Because they refuse to break his law in the obedience to earthly powers. They will be forbidden to buy or sell it will finally be decreed that they shall be put to death. This quotation is bringing out something important for you and me to take heed of. That there will come a time that those who want to be obedient to God and his commandments, the one way which the enemy is going to use to force you to bow down will simply be just to cut your support. I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning. He will simply just cut off the support. That, oh, Mr. Brian relies on this power. Okay, for his business to run, he needs power. Oh, okay. For his whatever to do, he needs this water. No problem. But we are telling him to bow. He's refusing. Just cut off his support. Now, you realize if your support is cut off, I don't know how far you can go in obedience to God. So, God is saying, 
those who are obedient to me, there is a time coming they will be cut off. So if you want to do this and still remain connected to everything else, then you're still exposing yourself to be used, manipulated, to bow down and obey. Country living is not a rushed or a sudden decision. That's the other point I want to bring out. It is not a rushed or a sudden decision. You see, the, the Bible and the spirit of prophecy encourages us that we need to be orderly and disciplined the way we do things. From the publishing ministry, uh, page 189, paragraph 2, we say, God is not the author of confusion, but of order and progress. Let those who desire to advance his kingdom make haste slowly and build intelligently. God is saying, all those who want to advance his kingdom, make haste slowly. I wonder how God is expecting us to make haste slowly. He wants us to do things intelligently. Beloved, just because you're saying, I want to obey, I want to obey Christ, doesn't mean you need to move and Remove all your intelligence. All the way you think about things. You know, you and me, when we are doing our businesses, when we want to start up a garden, whatever, we are very meticulous, well-planned, and well-detailed. But when it comes to following God, we somehow we think it's something you don't have to plan. It's just a rush thing. Just go. Don't even think about anything. 1 Corinthians 14.40 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. All things. And all things include country living. I mean me. All things include country living. It has to be done decently. What does the word decent imply? It has to be done in a way that if somebody comes and says, oh, I want to come and see your home, they have to experience the decency. They have to experience the order that this is decent. This is orderly. That's what God is putting an ideal for you and for me. So it is not a rush decision. You just hear about the message. Oh, my heart is burning. Immediately you jump. Where are you going? I don't know. Where are you going to sit? I don't know. Where are you going to sleep? I don't know. I'll find out. But why? No, it's faith. I'm a very faithful person. I'm moving by faith. No, no, no. God says we must have an intelligent faith. That's what you and me need to understand and adopt. That said... The other point I want to bring out is that country living is not having a perfect plan. Because now there are two extremes. There is one extreme that says, you know what? To show that you have faith. Like what happened in the time of Paul, where they sold their businesses and everything. Their biggest issue in their mind was they wanted to show that they have faith. So these ones, because they want to show that they have faith to others, they will make a certain rush decision. But... The other opposite end are those who say, I will not move until everything I have actually planned and I can see everything, where it is going to go, where the nuts and bolts are going to be, then that is also another extreme. Because, you see, the, the, the testimonies are saying there's a work that needs to be done. When the Lord gives work, that's from uh, the patriarchs and, Patri patriarchs and kings, Prophets and kings, it's saying, when the Lord gives a work to be done, let no men stop to inquire into the reasonableness of the command or the probable results of their efforts to obey. The supply in their hands may seem to fall short of the need to be filled, but in the hands of the Lord, it will prove more than sufficient. God is saying, there's a work that needs to be done. Nobody should stop and start to inquire. This decision or this guidance God is giving me, I need to move and live in the country. How is this thing going to happen? You're beginning to see what are the results and all these things. So you want to see everything to the end before you move. God is saying, no, I want you to move by faith. Plan and say, God will provide and now start moving. But not to say you will not do anything. You will plan nothing. You won't even consider anything. You will just go, then that's another extreme altogether. Psalm 37 5 says, commit thy ways to the Lord, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. The other thing I wanted to say is that country living is not hiring workers to do all the labor. You see, one thing is a fact. When you go into the country, you hear from the testimonies that are going to come. You need people to help you. Because you see, in the country it's different. Uh, my brother Malumbu, here in the city, I was living on a plot. I want you to get me well. But in the country, I live on a property. Are you seeing the difference? So this whole compound where Central Church is sitting becomes the property of one person. Now for you to manage all this, 
And behind that side, you have the farms and everything else. There is no way you can do it by yourself. But at the same time, it is not saying I will just hire all the laborers to do everything while I just sit and, uh, and relax because I have the resources. So everybody should do everything for me. God's blessings we have seen are in you. Who is the owner of that property? You also taking part in what needs to happen. And also, country living is not colonizing in large groups. You see, people think, okay, fine, you say we should, we should go out. So let's just come. So many of us, let's come into one space so that uh, we should warm each other up and all these things. Sister White says in the Fundamentals of Christian Education, page 495, she says, do not crowd into one place, making the same mistake that has been made in Battle Creek. There are hundreds of places that need the light God has given you. God is saying, don't just crowd yourself in one place. God has put light in you, and he wants that light to go into the world, not for you to create a Jerusalem center in one space. Uh, God is saying, don't do that. Country living is not a uniform plan for everyone. I want this, this to be heard. It is not a uniform plan for everyone. Because this one did it this way, somehow it means everybody has to do it the very same way. No, because the house was built with two bedrooms, it means everybody has to build with two bedrooms. Or it means because this one went to a countryside which is in the northern region, it means everybody has to go to the northern region. Beloved, it is not a uniform plan for everybody. Others, maybe their dwelling may be small. Others, their dwelling may be big. Others may be called and may be given resources perhaps within the shortest time, others within the longest. It is not the same for everybody. You will quickly see when the time of testimonies come that these people, all of them live in the country, but they're not saying the very same things. It is not a uniform plan for everybody. Just because this one drives a, 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 a Nissan a duet doesn't mean everybody should be driving a Nissan duet. Because other people say, no, Mr. Gumpumula, your country friends, they drive a Nissan duet. So why are you driving a, a VW? Come on, beloved. It is not a uniform for everybody. And it will not be uniform for me. I mean, for you, even also for me. Okay? It doesn't mean because where I am sitting, you're saying I live in the country. So where I'm sitting is the only place that defines country. If you are not in Nkadabi, you're not in the country. That is very wrong. It is not uniform for everybody. Because others who live in Neno, you know, they, they would also think that country is just in Neno. You know. Nowhere else can you be if it's not in Neno. You know. Nowhere else can you be if it's not in Chinji. No, 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 no. It is not the same for everybody. You see, Sister White in the book Adventist Home, she comments, The time has come when as God opens the way, families should move out of the cities. The children should be taken into the country. The parents should get a suitable a place as their means will allow. Though the dwelling may be small, yet there should be land in connection with it that may be cultivated. If you see the counsel that the servant of the Lord is giving, the book Adventist Home, page 139, she's saying, as one, she says, as God opens the way. That is a very important point to note. So maybe the Lord may open your door sooner then he opens the door for the next person. So as the Lord opens the door, families should move, number one. And it also mentions to say, as your means may allow. Beloved, let us be accepting of one another to know that we are different. And the way we are going to exercise these things will be different. It's not a blueprint that cut us for everybody. So if Mr. Gumpumla goes out and builds a one-bedroom house, I go out and build a two-bedroom house... Mr. Kumpulu, I cannot say, Mr. Mandula, something is wrong. Why are you having two bedrooms? I have one. It is not supposed to be uniform for everybody. As the means allow, God says, move and express yourself as God has blessed you. But make sure you have enough land connected with the house so that you can cultivate it. That's the counsel. It's simple and straightforward. Country living also is not a retirement plan. Just because somebody has retired and gone to the rural areas, we shouldn't say, oh, they've gone to start country living. It is not a retirement plan. At the same time, it is not something Mr. Jipungu should be saying, right now I'm energetic, right now I am strong, let me stay in the city first. I do all my labors and all my effort should end here while I live here. But when I am old and gray, 
when my back can't hold me anymore then I'll go to can't living as a retirement no can't living is not a retirement plan you will quickly see where we are going that is there's something that will need to be done can't living is not just for yourself or for myself what do i mean god will use your existence in the country to bring others also to the knowledge of his truth god would have us open up our doors to other people who will learn certain truths because of visiting those who have moved into the country because others feel that no it is just for me this is my space i'm not allowing anybody within this space i don't even want them to know where i live no that is not what god would have you and me to do by opening up our doors to others we are going to shed some light to them during the testimonies we are going to give the testimonies what god has done by just opening your door for other people just to come in and experience what you are experiencing and be spoken to the other thing which is also important to mention is that country living is not easy uh mr gumpum like do you hear me very well i said country living is not well it's not easy uh don't think that uh when you just go into the bush Somehow the trees are going to start clapping their hands. Oh, welcome Mr. Kaira. Welcome here. We were looking forward to having you. The that the environment beloved is natural and the natural environment can be tough. I have to repeat that. So it's not easy. It's a natural environment and it is like a, I don't know how best I can say this, but it is not the easiest thing to do. If you you can find a place where you have trees but you need to cut down the trees you need to start creating a garden it is not the easiest thing to do so we should not lie to each other that you know what can't living you just go there sit on a hammock and watching the sunset and life goes on it's it's, it's not that there's there's some work that needs to be done so it is not it is not easy there's something that god would have us to understand it would involve physical labor it would involve physical labor whether you have to cut down trees or you have to wood and all these things it will it will exert you even physically mentally and spiritually it will exert some 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 things on you and me it's not easy but by god's grace it it can be done amen so when you're psychologically prepared that what you are doing is not a walk in the park because others maybe they thought it was a walk in the park and they got offended that hey i'm not doing this i'm going back country living is not freedom from temptation Uh, let me repeat that because you see we have this wrong mindset that we think now I'm in the country I'm amidst the trees and whatever it's like you are free the devil can't find you there beloved the truth of the matter is country living is not let me repeat it is not freedom from temptation even if you live at a distance from other people it is still not because you will find moments which are frustrating you have planted your tomatoes and you know in the natural environment yeah the, those bugs will come and eat it all up your whole field is gone it, you will find moments which are very frustrating and you would want to even break your castle or you break your home because it is so frustrating so it doesn't mean you are free from temptation country living is not does not start when you get to the country what do i mean it is something that needs to be started before you even get there because you can't say right now my hands don't touch anything i don't touch a hole i don't even touch a drilling machine not even a screwdriver but when i go to the country you will see how i'm going to go into the garden the whole morning i believe it the reality of the matter is it needs to start while you are right in the seat you create your own garden at home it's an it's a mindset it's an attitude it's a lifestyle so if you don't understand this and say somehow when you go the trees don't speak i'm sure at uh, gonsalo you can testify do the trees speak they don't so don't expect that when you go to the to the to the to the, to the mountains the trees will begin to tell you oh mr gonsalo this is how we do a garden blah 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 the trees will be silently just looking at you So it is not something you, you you just somehow when you are in that environment you become a jack of everything it, it, it's not true uh it starts before you even get there Now that we've spoken what country living is not now let's go to what country living is I've spoken about some not all I'm sure there could be more but some of the myths that are there about country living that no that is not what country living is but now what is country living then because we have spoken a lot of what it is not number 1 country living is communion with god first and foremost that i need to bring it to your attention is that country living 
is communion with God. The reality is, I know when you are right here in the city, I know we all pray. I'm not saying people in the city don't pray, they don't have time with God. That's not what I'm trying to imply. But I'm saying country living gives you quiet an interrupted time with God. Imagine being in an environment which is very quiet, where you will not be hearing beep, beep, bah, 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 you know, you know, people noise, it. nothing like that. It's quiet for hours on end. And you can have time to commune with your God. So God wants to bring you to a place. The same way the health message which was given to the church the health message was given so that God, our minds should be clear for us to connect with our God. God is saying, I'm giving you the country living message as well so that your distractions are clear. I can have time with you. That's basically what God wants first and foremost when it comes to the issue of country living. So, the example of Christ in Luke chapter 6 verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Mr. Story, have you ever prayed in a mountain before? I'm sure you've... Are you not a a master guide? I'm sure you've been in the mountain and all these places. But imagine when you went to those mountains, being in that mountain the whole night, up until the morning, praying. Why? It afforded him the best opportunity in that environment. That's why he said, guys, let me leave you. Let me go to this solitary place so that I can pray. So country living does give you that. It gives you a lot of it to give you time to commune with your God in prayer. Country living is optimal living. Country living is optimal living. What do I mean by it is optimal living? You and me who are in the city or even in the country, When we want to relax, when we want to have, um, you know, the work has been so stressful, now I need to relax a little bit, where do we usually go? We either go to the lake, we either go to the mountain lodge, we either go for a hike. Where do we usually go? Now, see the environments you are choosing. That environment, the country living affords you that environment already. So imagine you are waking up to fresh air. Mm, as the preacher is saying. Fresh air. You, you open your windows wide and the air that goes in there is nice and fresh. When you get out of there, now your vegetables are nice and fresh. Now the water you're drawing is nice and fresh. It's optimal living. Everything is at its best. So God is saying, I want you to live life at its best. When it comes to your prayer time, optimal. When it comes to your water, optimal. When it comes to your food, optimal. Everything is at its optimum state. That's where I want you. Basically, that's what country living is. What God would have us to experience. Country living is a learning from nature. Beloved, by beholding, the Bible says, we become what? By beholding, we become what? We become changed, but changed into what? We become changed into the very image we what? We behold. So if all, and, all you and me are beholding is the works of man, the wisdom of man, we become changed to glorify, assimilate, align with the wisdom of man. God is saying, no, I want you to look when you are in the press where there is nature. Your mind is more inclined to see nature, and nature is going to teach you. God says in the book of Psalm 19, verse 1 and 2, says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night sheweth knowledge. Beloved, when you're in the country location, it's nice and dark. You look up into the sky. Beloved, you feel as if you've never seen a sky before. It is dotted with stars and you see all this milky way because the environment around you is nice and dark most of the times. So you are able to behold this. God is saying, when you look at this, you see the handiwork of God. And who are you going to praise after that experience? You say, oh, God is powerful. But if you open up your eyes and all you see is a skyscraper and the seas and that, you begin to say, but Malawi, they are engineers, isn't it, Malu? Is that what we say? Hey, well, my engineer, Malawi, I'm in. My engineer, Malawi, I'm in. Oh, my engineer, whatever, whichever country you come from. But the thing is, you begin to praise man. But God is saying, no, 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 I want you to look at nature. 
But not just see nature, but you should see the God of nature when you are in the natural environment. That's what country living does to you and me. Uh, from the book, uh, Proverbs is saying, Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Beloved, uh, we have these little ants. Um, Lintumbu, that's what we call it in Chichewa, the army, the army ants. Yeah? Now, these little ants, I took some time here with my daughter. Sometimes we stand and just watch them and what they do, how they build their networks and how they protect themselves, how they do all these things. God is saying, just go to the ant. The ant is going to teach you. So God is simply saying, I want to put you in an optimal environment. I want you to learn from nature. And I also want you not just to learn of nature, but to learn of nature's God. Amen? But when you're always looking at people and what people have done, you just praise people. Country living is family time. You see, one beautiful thing about country living is that when God has said, don't be so crowded together. So when you're not so crowded together, one is there, one is there. It forces you into contact with each other as a family. Because now your wife, bec my wife has never been my friend the way she is now. Oh, right now, I don't have a choice. Uh, so tell me, I don't have a choice. The person who I have closest to me, I see almost all the time, is this girl over here. So I am forced. If I didn't have any stories, I have to create them. Because otherwise, the day can be very long and boring. So my children, so we have a lot of time together. Because now, God said, I want you to have time together as a family. Because in the city... Everybody, we were all busy going this way and whatever. So now this forces you into close proximity with each other. So you get a lot of family time. If you play together, whether we cook together, we do all these things, God grants you a lot of family time. For those who have boys, you have a chance to teach them about trades and all these things. You have a lot of time together, and it's a lot of it. You don't have time just to sit down with Nickelodeon. And watch Nickelodeon all day. You don't. Ha you cannot even have that time. There's just so much that needs to be done, either in the garden and everywhere else, together with your family. Country living is character development, beloved. I know everything I'm saying is important, but this is important. Country living is character development. One thing which people miss and you and me sometimes miss, is that God wants to bring your character into likeness with himself. Now, when he takes you out of this environment, and he wants to place you in a natural environment, he wants to develop your and my character. You see, I've mentioned that we spend a lot of time with our families. The more time, Mr. Jibungu, you are going to spend with your family, the more defects you are going to see that, hey, my child is so rude. Hey, my wife is very forgetful. Because now you have more time with each other. So you begin to see faults and weaknesses with each other. You also begin to see faults and weaknesses with yourself. Some of you here have been in, involved in an accident before. Yeah? And you know when your hand is broken. Yeah? All the pain, all the attention is usually to this hand. But you have a backache. But that backache usually is not noticed because of the what? Because of the hand. Now that the hand has been healed, that's when you begin to feel the pain in the back. What am I trying to say? When you are busy, you have meetings and what and all these things, you never have a quiet time. You never get to know who your real or what your real character is. But now when you are in these quiet moments, and you have, all, you have a lot of them, by the way, a lot of quiet moments, then you begin to reflect and say, but what did I say that time? What was I thinking with what I did? Then you begin to see all these cracks in your own character and you come to God and say, Dear God, please help me. I am undone. Because now God says, Now I have your attention. Now I can reveal to you, Jasper, there is a problem here which you are not seeing because we are too busy. So God wants to develop your in my character. Even through all the experiences I've mentioned, God wants to develop you in my character. Uh, the book Adventist Home also uh, testifies the same. He's saying, there is not one family in a hundred who will be improved physically, mentally, or spiritually by residing in the city. Faith, hope, love, happiness, 
and the can far better be gained in retired places where there are fields and hills and trees. This is the testimony from the Lord. He's saying the city does not, Im- it does improve you and me. It does. I'm not saying the city does nothing. It does. That's why you and me are here. H- hello? I'm saying that's why you and me are here. You are prayerful and spiritual people. Amen? Uh, please say amen for yourself. Amen? That's why you are here. I know you pray. I know you do all these things. But the testimony of the Lord is saying, it can do this, yes, but what can do far better to take you from here to a level which you've never been before, the city can't do that. Is when you are residing in places where, he's saying the issues of faith, hope, and love, they can far better be gained in retired places. This is the counsel of the Lord. So one should not go away and say, no, I, me, I can also pray in the city. Of course you can. We do come meetings in the city. We do evangelism in the city. But say you can far better in the country. That's what the testimony is saying. It continues. Take your children away from the sights and the sounds of the city. Away from the rattle and the din of streetcars and teams. And their minds will become more healthy. It will be found easier. To bring home to their hearts the truth of the word of God. It is not saying when you take your children to their country, they become angels somehow. So if you just say, no, Zekani, don't do this, somehow she will not do it. That's not what it means. They are still as difficult as your children. Amen? Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say these little girls of mine are angels. Ah, They too make mistakes. But this testimony is saying, it will be easier to bring home to their hearts the truth of the word of God, then when you are in the city, that's what the testimony is simply saying. He's simply presenting a better level of living. Country living is agriculture. If there's one thing you cannot bypass when you're talking about country living, is agriculture has to be part and parcel of that equation. It cannot move away from it. It is not the only thing, as we've already seen. I've mentioned many things. But it is not the only thing. Because for others, it's a misconception. Country living is agriculture, and you stop there. It is not just one thing that summarizes the whole message. However, it is very important for it to be there. Growing your gardens. I myself am uh, not very familiar with the hoes, but I have learned to grab the hoe, plant trees, and all these things. You, you cannot get away from going into the garden. But at the very same time, it has rich rewards. Amen? It has rich rewards. We, we planted so many fruit trees. We're eating our pomegranates and, and apples. And well, I don't wait your appetite. But we have all these things that God is saying. You, where you see, I planted this apple tree myself. Now I'm eating the apples. It is such a satisfying feeling. You don't know. Such a satisfying feeling. And also, when you're going into the garden to uproot those weeds and all these things, it's a lesson that you learn, that you know what sin has to be taken out of the character. There's so much that agriculture does to you and me. And you can lavish your table <laughs> with the food, the beautiful food, that even kings are going to envy you. Agriculture is the, is the practical workbook for the Christian in the school of Christ. In, 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 in our usual government schools, we say we need to have practicals. Agriculture now it becomes a practical for your Christian life. That's what he's saying. Country living is becoming self-sufficient. Uh, what do I mean by that? In God's plan for the book, Counsels to Parents and Teachers. In God's plan for Israel, every family had a home on the land with sufficient ground for tilling. Thus, we provided both the means and the incentive for a useful, industrious, and self-supporting life. And in God's plan, he made sure all the children of Israel, every family had a piece of land that they were tilling. So he gave them useful uh, labor, which also is incentivized. He continues to say, and no devising of men has ever improved on that plan. To the world's departure from it is owing. To a large degree, the poverty and wretchedness that exists today. The poverty and the wretchedness you are seeing today is because you and me have moved away from the plan that God gave. That No, no, you need to have your own piece of land. You need to have somewhere you can vet Somewhere you call this your own. This is, this is your life. This is who you are. Not just I hire people. Just go and get this. God is saying the blessings are in you doing those things. That's where the blessing really is. Uh, you also have to learn when he's saying sufficient. You are you are creating your own food, 
uh, you are also coming to a place where you are also uh, like water, for example. It gives you an opportunity for you to develop a system which you can use uh, for water. We developed our own system as well. Even our friends are going to give their own testimonies of the same as well. Even power. You, you, you're learning now to be self-sufficient, creating your own source of power. As I stand here, I already have my escom as I sit here. I have my escom, I iron my clothes, I, I do all sorts of things. I'm my own escom. I'm, I'm, I'm learning to become self-sufficient. Even my wife and children are learning now how to make clothes and do all these things. You are learning to be self-sufficient. That's what God wants you to do in the country. Not to sit down and feel holy and just think everybody else is a sinner. It is God saying, I want you to learn to be self-sufficient. There is a work that needs to be done. Even for the children, they need to learn to be self-sufficient. There was a time I hated tools and all these things, but now I love tools. I, I, I see the value of... I, when I go to town, I buy tools. I'll just buy this, I'll buy this little hole. Because I see what those tools can do uh, in an environment. Country living is also medical missionary work. What do I mean country living is medical missionary work? You see, in the book... Uh, Councils on Health, page 506, it says, as religious aggression su subverts the liberties of our nation, those who stand for freedom of conscience will be placed in unfavorable positions for their own sake. They should, while they have the opportunity, become intelligent in regard to disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. He's saying, those who are believing in God pastor here, I mean the elder was saying uh, the, the, those who keep the commandments of God and uh, the faith of Jesus Christ. You will come to a position where the world is going to hate you. The world is not going to like you. It will put you in unfavorable circumstances. Beloved, one thing which many of you and me are going to fail on in the time of trouble or when the Sunday law comes around is because we have no knowledge of the medical missionary work. We do not know how to use skills, how to use natural things that God has placed to be and to bring back health. That's why he's saying those who want to be translated, they need to become intelligent. We need to. It is not an option. You need to. For how long are you going to get the drugs? Even if they can sell them to you. But there will come a time when the drugs cannot be sold anymore. You are saying, oh, you don't want to keep the, the sandal on. No problem. Just don't come to our hospital. How are you going to survive? You have a five-year-old child. How are you going to survive? So God is saying, I want you in while you have the time. Become intelligent. On disease, Bwana Jasper, be intelligent about disease. Why? It's cause. You need to know what causes disease. You need to know. God does not expect you to say, but they are doctors. No, he's talking to Mr. Chawani, who is just uh, an administrator. You need to know what causes disease. What is, how do you prevent disease? You need to know how you cure disease. And country living gives you that opportunity in abundance. To learn all these things. And those who do this work will find a field of labor anywhere. There will be suffering ones, plenty of them, who will need help. Not only among those of our own faith, but largely among those who know not the truth. The shortness of time demands an energy that has not been aroused among those who claim to believe the present truth. He's saying the shortness of this time should arouse something in us to say, you know what? There's little time. So within this time, let me learn as much as I can what causes disease, how do I prevent it, how do I cure it, and it's also saying there is a field of labor everywhere. People need help, beloved. I can't stress this enough. People need help. Some of you, you go into board meetings, you see somebody sitting there, <sighs> what is it, my, my brother? No, you know, BP, it's giving me a problem. And what do you say? Ah, sorry. That's it? Mr. Brian, you've been given an opportunity now to tell this person, okay, is this the problem? Fine. What you need to do is A, B, C, D. One, two, three. Not just go to the hospital and get the medicine to lower your blood pressure. Come on now. God is saying, I want you to become intelligent on these things. And that's how you are going to minister to these people. You open doors when you help them. Some of the testimonies, we share them as the Lord grants us the time. Of the opportunities God has granted and how, you, how this opens doors for people to hear the word of truth. Country living is mission in the byways. Beloved, 
God is saying in the testimonies, serious times are before us. And there is great need for families to get out of the cities into the country. That the truth may be carried into the byways as well as the highways of the earth. Much depends upon laying our plans according to the word of the Lord. And with persevering energy, carrying them out. He's saying... God is saying, Mr. Jibungu, I want you to get out of the city. Why? This is the other reason. He's saying, I have a lot of work out there. And we say, no, you see, because there's also work here in town. So let me sit. Beloved, I usually say the city is star-studded. How many elders do we have at Central Church? And you are even spoiled for choice. You actually say, ah, this year there should be Mr. Ziwa. But next year, let's rest him. We have choice. But in the countryside, you, you're not spoiled like that. And there are families, there, there are locations that need to hear the word of God. And God is saying, I want you out there for that particular reason. Ever since I've gone to the country every year, effort, effort, effort. Last year, I had two. The other, the other, I had two efforts. The other effort I was doing in Mzuzu, there is work everywhere there is work. And God is saying, I want my people to get out of the seat. Why? Because in the byways, I have people there. I need to hear the message of truth. God forbid one day, so no, no. God should say to you, there were people in Inchinji who perished out of Christ. Because you refused to get out of the seat. Because if you had gone out to them, you would have brought this light to them. But you refused. You were very comfortable where you were sitting. So you didn't want to do anything as long as Amo is contributing money, isn't it? We've contributed money, so the money has gone to do an effort. You think you are fine. God is saying every individual. So imagine all of us going out there and sharing the word of truth. How much light will be shared in those byways? And it's saying more depends upon the consecrated activity and perseverance than upon genius and book learning. All the talents and ability given to human agents, if unused, are of little value. All the talents, Moses, all the talents God has given you, if you don't use them, God is saying they are of little value. Day after day, Sabbath school, we sit on our classes. We discuss, eh? And some of us are very argumentative. Eh? You see what it means there. All the time. No, he's saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. God is saying, can you take that knowledge into the countryside? In the countryside, I opened to go to little five days ago. Do you know that? No, you don't. That's why you're sitting here comfortable. Out there, the, the quarter that they're dealing with is five years ago. They are waiting for you, argumentative friend. Who knows the quarter here? Go there and teach them. But the problem is you and me are so comfortable. We have skills. We have talents. We boast over these talents. God is saying if you don't use them, they are of no value. That's why God wants you in the country. So we are busy saying, no, you know what, I, I can't do this and blah, blah, blah. I'm comfortable here. We invited our arrow to preach to me. So after he preaches to me, I wait for another powerful preacher next year. Nonsense. If these talents God is giving you, please use them. Don't think of yourself, no, me, I'm just me. I can't do anything. You are lying, my friend. My Ziwa, you in a country place, you just say, Fandi bange foti kuno, You will stand there, you will preach, you'll be surprised. 100 people will give their souls to Christ. So don't look down upon yourself and say, I can do nothing. You can do a lot. There's a great harvest out there, beloved. A great harvest. Every effort you do, people are giving their lives to the Lord. Then in truth, he, then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. I was blessed in my labors of going out to preach and doing evangelism that my daughters also gave their lives to Christ. Amen. So I ended up preaching to my own daughters and going out to preach to the world. Your own children, maybe they are waiting for daddy to preach. Malumbo, maybe your child is waiting for you to preach it. Oh, daddy knows the truth. I want the truth too. Country living is city mission. It is not saying, yes, we have a work in the countryside. We need to preach. But there's a work even here in the city that needs to be done. Besides, Edda Gonsal, what am I doing now? Where have I come from? And what am I doing now? I'm preaching to you. Country living is city mission. There are things that need to be done here in the city. Somebody needed to come and wake you up. Brian, wake up. Because us in the country, we fear nothing. Amen. Ah, we fear nothing. 
There are mosquitoes out there, there are snakes and what. I can't fear you, Malumbu. We fear nothing. And we have gone through very, very terrible circumstances there eh, for, for us to be afraid. So God is saying, go to the city and cry aloud to that city and say, wake up, people, wake up. As, as God commandment keeping people, we must leave the cities as did Enoch. We must work in the cities, but not dwell in them. So I agree with what I've heard other people say. We have worked to do in the city. I agree 100%, but I do not agree with the notion that says for us to work in the city, we must sit in the city because there's work to do here. That is wrong. God says live out of the city. Come to the city and work the city. Preach to the city. Minister to the city. Like Enoch, when you're done, resort back to your country place. That is the model God gave. But you and me are wondering, how come we are not so effective? But we're in the city. Now a Mandula has to come and preach in the city. The way, I thought you were here. No, Malumbo, I thought you were here. Why did I have to come all the way from Nkadabe to speak here when you were right here? That tells you something. That when you are in the city, you, there's not much that you do. Ma, those, these friends of mine have brought, we've come up together from the countryside, different places. If they'll give you their testimonies, they'll tell you, hey, we are very busy. We're doing efforts here, we're doing efforts there. Why? When God takes you into the countryside, you begin to understand the value of a soul. No, you didn't get me. You begin to understand the value of a soul, and you're willing to sacrifice everything for that one person to be saved. But those who are in city are saying, we have no money, we have no time, you know, we are busy. God help us. Country living is true education, as we draw towards the close. Country living is true education. What do I mean by country is true education? You see, true education means more than just perusing a certain course of study. God is saying it has to do with the whole being. And that's exactly what country living chooses to do for you and me. To educate you, both mind, both hand, and both the heart, okay? So he's saying sin has marred the divine likeness of God in the book Education. We have become weak mentally, physically. We have become so weak. Even our vision is saying it has dimmed now. It's so dim. But God wants to restore all that. He wants to restore you and me back to what he had initially intended. And that's what country living does for you and for me. And he's saying the great work of education is redemption. God simply wants to educate you and me in the labors of our hand, in the ministry with our hearts and our whole being, just to restore his image back to where it was supposed to be. Country living is active church service. Some people think, no, when you're in the country, it means now you are an enemy of the church, so don't talk to the pastors anymore. Don't talk to any elder. You are an enemy. No, no, no. <laughs> country living is active church service. Because where you are going, when I just, there are churches there. Hello? But Jasper, I'm the first elder where I'm coming from. Ah, you didn't get me. I'm saying I'm the first elder of my district. And that district is not this district. It's here and you go as far as area three, one, one. That's the district. There is work that needs to be done. So it is being active in the church and go making sure things are happening. We are very active in the youth ministry. Making sure things are happening. Coming here to represent the, 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 the master guides and all that stuff. Can, country living is active church service. You don't, you don't shun the church. Actually, your involvement with the church is a great blessing. You will not believe what a blessing you can be in the countryside. Some of you have never been a head deaconess. Please go to the country. That's the time you'll be head deaconess. I mean, now some of us, uh, did we have a chance to become first elder? Moses. If I said here, I would have still been a deacon and perhaps just an ordinary elder. But now when I went to the country, oh, you are the first elder now of a big district. I'm enjoying my labors in the Lord. Country living is preparation for the Sunday law. I, I want to get to this point. I did mention that country living is not for the end times. However, God says in preparation for this crisis that is coming, Revelation 13, 17, that no man will be able to buy or sell. God is saying, I want you to develop a lifestyle. A lifestyle that will thrive even amidst these circumstances. Why? Patriarchs and kings, prophets and kings says, human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day Sabbath. 
For fear of wanting food and clothing, they will join with the world in transgressing the law. Brian, it's because you will be afraid that you will have no food, you will have no clothing, you will have no water. Then you are going to transgress the Sabbath because you are afraid you don't have these things. So God is saying, I want you to move to this location where now you can thrive without any support because these supports are are going to be cut off. So don't lie to yourself that water board will smile at you forever. Don't lie to yourself that Eskom will smile at you and me forever. It's not forever. Right now I put my card in the ATM. It tells me, good morning, Mr. Mandula. I take it out and take money. I know this is for a time. Every time I put in that card, I say, praise the Lord. But I know this is for a time. They will prevent me from buying and selling. It's not too long. It will close. Right now, everything is going mobile money, mobile money. Your air to money blocked, Mpamba blocked, card blocked, Eskom line blocked. You can't even buy air time, blah, blah, blah. Are you telling me you still hold on to Christ? We are lying to ourselves. God is saying, I want you to have an experience that will prepare you for this time. So go out. But we're saying, no, I still have to wait and see whether the crisis is really going to come. We are going to wait for too long. God is saying in the last day events, Again and again, again and again, the Lord is instructing, take your children away from the cities into the country where you can raise your own provisions for in the future. Beloved, this verse and this quotation is going to stand against you and me one day. Because in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be very serious. And if God has chosen to tell me this, to tell you this, we better take heed to these things. He's saying we should now begin to take heed before it is too late. Country living is present truth. I wouldn't labor much on this. The preacher mentioned it yesterday. There is always a truth for a time. This is a truth for our time. We are not the only ones talking current living, by the way. Just go to your YouTube and type country living SDA. You'll be surprised. Ghana, this, Nigeria. Everybody's talking about this. Why? It's present truth. So don't ask me, why is the church not preaching country living? It was in the past. From the general conference level, they preached country living. But eventually, as time went by, it was transferred to the conferences. As time went by, it was transferred to the churches. As time went by, it has come to the individuals. So don't be surprised. Right now, you hear this message not from the, the general corporate body. It will come from individuals and their experiences. Accept it. It's just the way it is right now. Present truth, Second Peter is saying we need to be established in present truth. The truth for our time. During Noah's time, the present truth was a flood is coming. Get ready. During Jonah's time, the truth was Nineveh in 40 days is going to be destroyed. For you and me now, country living is present truth. Why? The sun the law is coming. If you don't get ready for this crisis, you are going to be lost. This is present truth. Beloved, I want to say this solemn warning to you. Perhaps this may be the last time this country living message is given this kind of a platform. I am telling you the truth. It could be the last time we could sit up here and talk about a subject like this. Don't expect in the next few years there will be another fire about country living. These fires are going down. There was a fire about health reform. Oh, let's reform. Adventists were on fire. Let's reform. We need to change our diet. Blah, blah, blah. What is happening now? That message has gone. There was a fire about dress reform. Our dresses were all the way up to here. But now that message has gone. Country living is about to do the same. And it will never come back. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said, it's about to go through that curve and it is going and it will never come back. So if you are saying, I am waiting for an opportune moment for me to make a decision. I'm waiting for the come meeting of 2026. Maybe that come meeting, there are going to be some powerful presentation. At that time, I'm going to jump. Beloved, you are going to jump to a cow that has no tail. You jump to grab a tail and you realize the cow had no tail. And we are going to blame ourselves. Why didn't we make a decision when the time was there? So, beloved, the quotation I read is saying, where is your faith in the word of God? That is now how you demonstrate, Lord, I believe what you said. You said it, I believe it, it's good enough. But if we are waiting, we we'll wait for too long. This is present truth. That said, let me conclude by saying country living is fun. Ah, you didn't hear me, Moses. I said country living is fun. 
It has a lot of beautiful moments where you and your family can spend excursions and this. There is so much. God is saying, I'm going to make you a king and a queen. You are going to live so happily there. It is so much fun. That's what God is promising. You have a lot of moments to spend with your family, to go on excursions. You can even choose to make a picnic outside, whether you want to camp. It has so much fun opportunities. All these campfires and all these things. The youth are waiting to come tomorrow night for a campfire. You can even do it in your own property. Right there. You have all these trees that you brought there. You can just cut a few trees and do exactly what you've done as just one individual. So it is a lot of fun that God is promising you and me. There's a last promise in the book Adventist Home, page 141, it's saying, do not consider it a privation when you are called to leave the cities and move into the country. Here, there awaits rich blessings for those who grasp them. Beloved, there is a promise here. He's saying in the country place, in the country life, there are great blessings for those who are courageous enough to grasp them. I, I, I am seeing a lot of blessings and goodness from the Lord because I've trusted in what he has said and I know there is more that, that he is going to reveal to you and to me. I've come to the end of this presentation and I pray that God has spoken to each and every one of us and he will continue to speak even as we have our interactive sessions and everything else. That we, as we interact, we are not just interacting for the sake of argument. We are not just interacting for the sake of passing time but because we want to prepare our hearts to meet our God in peace. Amen. Mm-hmm.